We from Brooklyn, we're scrapping, it's part of life. Right. So we happen to be the type of journalist to start a fight. What? I was raised in Gleason's, I was in the precinct. Damn. But I beat the case with my sweet peak defense. Ah. You drinking if you think you beating us. If I have to, I'ma put on margarita gloves. Don't do it. I'm in the bar, plays like I own it. What you expected? The way I seized the moment, they thought I was epileptic. Damn. The fight game can't survive without me. I throw shots that make fighters spit out their mouthpiece. Never days off, nah. only days on. Yeah. I represent the hood like I'm Trayvon. Ooh. These moments in boxing are so proper, like when Floyd told Oscar he beat his whole roster. It's our action that speaks the loudest, though we the sweet scientists. They ain't nothing yeah. sweet about us. All right, folks, you tuned in to At The Fight. And uh, we have a special guest today. I mean, this gentleman always makes me feel like a loser at 37. Man, I can't hang a suit the way he does. I can't get to bed early. I mean, <laughs> legend legend himself, Bernard Hopkins, is Definitely. in the building with us. Yo, what's up? What's up? Uh, man, Bernard, I mean... Listen, you know the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Bernard is how, how he <laughs> broke my heart in 2001. Oh, Felix Trinidad. <laughs> at yes. the Madison Square Garden. Definitely. But, you know, getting to know him over the years, I, I think I've healed. <laughs> you know, and I've no grown to, to appreciate and love his career. And uh, he, I mean, he's a hell of a guy. Bernard, I mean, were you – I want to I want to take the, the listener back to that time, to uh, 2001. Before that fight, it, it almost seems like the, the boxing world knew that Bernard was a force to be reckoned with. I mean, he has so many title defenses, but mainstream America wasn't aware yet. They, I mean, they had Trinidad winning that fight, and you were in your mid-30s, around 35 or so. 35. Right. W was it a frustrating feeling that that even though you knew that you were better than this kid and, and, and that you were better than most fighters in the world, but you didn't get that national recognition? Well, no, not because of Trinidad, because if you remember by the time of Trinidad beating Oscar De La Hoya and maybe having won, I believe, fight before we fought, um, he wasn't campaigning as a middleweight. He was campaigning, um, I believe, as a welterweight or as a junior middleweight. Junior. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But so that wasn't the case. He was doing with what, what fighters done in, in, in the past is to come up from one weight and to dominate in another weight class. Ray Leonard done it. Um, you know, a lot of fighters have done that, and they do it to the day. So I, I think it was just an opportunity for, for Trinidad. But for me, it was a thing where um, because of 9-11, because of all of the circumstances around that, a lot of focus was put on boxing being the first big event two weeks after 9-11 and right. I'm in right. New York City. So I'm in a sort of unique but historic situation when it comes to that fight, from my opinion, being in mainstream media, mainstream media or mainstream people's uh, 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 minds and, and opinions and, and watching that fight because this was promoted as the event after that tragedy in New York City, in Madison Square Garden, of all places. So when you look at that, and you look at my performance that night, oh, that made that made Beautiful. that made people that didn't know Hopkins right right because of the event right. right? And I got to you know it's it's it's, it's giving credit to what it, it right. is in right. a sad situation that brought a lot of tension that wouldn't have been there if that didn't happen. Yeah, if you yeah. know what I mean. Is it so true? I think that helped me. Under them circumstances. Definitely, definitely. Benefited propelled. me. Right. Definitely. Well, I heard one time in an interview, Roy Jones said that he's the one that told you that you should fight Felix Trinidad. Is that true? What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I want to know. I've no, seen it's him. not true. But yeah, no, he said that in an interview. He said, you know, I'm the one that told him to, he need to fight <laughs> Trinidad to get to get his views up, you know, to, to get the people to know him. Well, you, you got your answer. I don't think <laughs> I think Roy said, was. what? <laughs> but Y'all uh, should have seen his face. Fight, I don't, I don't, th but the thing is, like, you know, I don't think Roy might have said it. I might didn't hear him. and not right. taking up for him. Okay. But let me, let me tell you whether we colleagues or not. My thing is, is that if Trinidad would have thought he can not beat me, I don't think he would have fought me, or even his promoter, Don King. Absolutely. I mean, he just wiped so, out Joppy, so right. he's feeling, so, he's feeling so, himself. So, so my, thing, my thing is is that 
it was an opportunity for Trinidad to become the middleweight champion in the world. Right. And you, that fight was even postponed. You, you got to take risk. And it was postponed. It was, it was so supposed to be the from 15th, the 15th, 15th to, to the 29th. 29th. Right. So it, it's a thing where he took a chance. He took an opportunity. It's no different than I went up two-way classes oh. to fight Tarver. That's so, right. I mean, right, right. you take a shot, sometimes you win, sometimes yeah, I don't you think lose. Anybody... I think this fight is very close to being over. Sweet scientist. Oh, he's out. He's out. He was out before he hit the camera.